Hi everyone. Today's topic is epidemiology of malocclusion and dental trauma. Learning outcomes. At the end of the topic, students should be able to explain the public health concerns of malocclusion and trauma, describe the public health approach in prevention of dental trauma. Come to the percentage of malocclusion among different people like Chinese children have 67.82% in the meantime Nigerian children's 84% so malocclusion is more prevalent among Nigerians children's then Indians have approximately 20% American whites 34% black 15% so that's about the epidemiology of malocclusion the next is the prevalence of malocclusion is higher in developed when compared to developing and underdeveloped countries. Malocclusion percentage relatively low in deciduous dentition. Normal occlusion is 51% in primary and 40% in mixed and 30% in permanent dentition. So this is only about the normal occlusion. So remaining is malocclusion. So the index which we use to measure the malocclusion is IOTN. The index is used to determine those cases that most need treatment with braces so that limited resources can be targeted at those patients in greatest need avoiding the provision of expensive treatment to mild cases. This is very useful when there is a shortage of specialists like orthodontist. So we can classify and we can prioritize the patients and we can segregate. So this patient needs early treatment compared to this patient and this patient does not want treatment only. This is very mild malocclusion. Something like that we can classify with this. So this is very helpful index. So components of IOTNs are dental health component and aesthetic component. Sequelae of malocclusion. So it will be like poor facial appearance risk of caries, predisposition to periodontal disease, risk of trauma, psychological disturbances, abnormalities of functions and TMJ problem. So Graeber's classification of etiology of malocclusion. He is classified like hereditary factors, like general factors, then congenital factors, then environment. Under environment, Prenatal factors like trauma, maternal diet, German measles, maternal metabolism. Then postnatal like birth injury, TMJ injury, cerebral palsy. Then predisposing metabolic climate and disease like endocrine imbalance, metabolic disturbances, infectious diseases. Dietary problems like nutrition deficiency, abnormal pressure habits and functional abrasion like abnormal sucking, thumb and finger sucking, tongue thrusting and tongue sucking, lip and nail biting, tonsil and adenoids, improper deglutition, then respiratory abnormalities and bruxism. Coming to the local factors like abnormal frenal attachments, this is the picture which shows abnormal frenal attachment. Then anomalies of tooth number like supernumerary or missing teeth. Then abnormal shape and size of the tooth. Then premature loss of deciduous teeth. Prolonged retention and delayed eruption. Abnormal path, pathway of eruption. Then oncolysis. Then dental caries. Improper restoration. So these are some of the local factors responsible for malocclusion. Then what is the role of public health dentist? See, whenever we see the malocclusion, like when we go for camps or when we see, uh, when pa patient visit uh, our dental clinics, that time we have to educate them. When we go for camp, we have to educate the school children and their parents and the teachers. And we can suggest what are the treatment modalities or how to prevent that. So we can just introduce about preventive orthodontics, interceptive orthodontics and orthodontic treatment. So we can 
convince them so these are the treatments so you can use for your uh, kids like that we can convince them and we have to explain them if we are uh, not going for the treatment what might be the future uh, disadvantage or uh, implications of this type of uh, malocclusion then coming to prevent orthodontics it's like habit counseling habit breaking appliances space maintainers and functional appliances for example this kid is using thumb sucking so we have to ha counsel the parents as well as the uh, kid but kid sometimes they won't uh, hear what we tell so we have to go for habit breaking appliances then comes the space maintenance you know if deciduous tooth sheds early then that space will cause malocclusion the space which is created by the exfoliation or uh, shedding of the tooth will cause some malocclusion so we have to prevent that space so these are space maintainers and sometimes if there is a jaw deformity we can go for functional appliances jaw deformity means maxillary has uh, grown shorter than mandible or mandible are, are like certain proportion should be equal to maxillary to mandible if that disproportion is there then we have to go for functional appliance during the growth period procedures undertaken in interceptive orthodontics like serial extraction correction of developing crossbite control of abnormal habits space regaining muscle exercises interception of skeletal mal relation removal of soft tissue or bony barrier to enable eruption of teeth so these are best explained in periodontics and orthodontics but here i am going just highlighting the things come to epidemology of dental trauma dental trauma takes longer to treat and is more expensive than many other bodily injuries treated on outpatient basis dental trauma affects a quality of life an untreated dental trauma affects an individual 20 times more compared to those who have never suffered a dental trauma the dominating problem was chewing eating food and school activities our students of class of 2023 or 24 i forgot they have prepared a book like when dental trauma happens what are the measures taken to uh, fix the evil's tooth so that link i am going to put it in this slide if you want you can use the prevalence of dental trauma is still high worldwide statistics from many countries show that about one third of the preschool children like one fourth of the school children one third of adults have suffered a dental trauma at least once during in their lifetime most frequent in first 10 years of life decrease gradually with the age and rare after 30 years oral region consists of 1% of total body area but it accounts for 5% of all somatic injuries oral region consists of 1% of total body area but it accounts for 5% of all somatic injuries around 30% at 5 years that is deciduous dentition between 10 to 67 percent at 12 years that is permanent dentition and gender boys generally more often injured than the girls and males that is 1.3 to 2.3 and female is one so males are little common than the females these are some of the pictures do like trauma by sports activities then causes like fall, collision, emotional state states, that is stressful. Then mobbing, epilepsy, like sudden fall from the epilepsy. Then hearing or visual impairments, sports, like hitting, then road traffic accident or motor vehicle accident. Predisposing factors like alcohol, lifestyle related things. Then prevalence of traumatic dental injuries in primary teeth that is less than five year old uh, i just tried to find some studies but uh, i could not find malaysian studies which are conducted recently these are some of the studies i got 
One Malaysian studies by Isa and Rasak in 1996, where uh, the male and female like sample size is very less three, but it's prevalent all over the world. So these are some of the pictures of trauma. Like this is the incisal edge fracture. This is crown fracture. Then this is pushed the tooth lingual area, and this is evolved almost. So classification of dental trauma according to Ellis classification there are like class 1, class 2, class 3, class 4, class 5, class 6, class 7 and 8. Most frequent types of dental trauma like uncomplicated crown fracture without pulp involvement, luxation of teeth, frequent teeth affected are maxillary central incisors then maxillary lateral incisors then mandibular centers so we can tell the anteriors of maxilla and mandibular teeth predisposing and risk factors like gender here also a slightly male predisposition is there then age definitely uh, by like uh, 10 is like from 5 to 10 will be more when kids starts playing after that like as the age goes up the risk is reduced then large maxillary overjet with incomplete lip closure like this so these teeth are prone for fracture then one third of the injuries occur among those with malocclusion and lower socioeconomic groups previous experience of dental trauma then lack of mouth guards face guards definitely it will lead to trauma while playing sport Knowledge among communities and professionals, caregivers in how to act at the scene of dental trauma is scarcity. Many people lack knowledge, children and adolescents, parents, physical trainers and active sportsmen, school and physical teachers, acute medical staff at emergency centers, medical students, doctors, school nurses, fire brigades, ambulance personnel and lay people. Correct and sufficient information about dental trauma in first aid textbook and manuals is lacking. This is a Facebook link where our students has uh, prepared a uh, video and a book for management of Evel's tooth. Prevention. Orthodontic treatment to correct malocclusions. Mouth guards while engaging a sports activity. Appropriate helmets with chin guards while cycling, health promotion through enabling factors such as safer playgrounds design, safety designs in school and home environments to prevent or minimize falls or their effects etc. Education on emergency management to parent teacher groups, careers in kindergartens and nurseries. National Oral Health Plan for Malaysia 2011-2020 for dental injuries and 12 year old. The app Dental Trauma is a dental first aid app which is endorsed by the International Association of Dental Traumatology. This app can be found on IADT homepage on App Store and Google Play Store. The app Dental Trauma presented in 18 language. Come to orofacial clefting. Cleft lip and cleft palate are birth defects that occur when a baby lip or mouth do not form properly during pregnancy. That is intrauterine in life. Then the lip forms between the 4th and 7th weeks of pregnancy. As a baby develops during pregnancy, body tissue and special cells from each side of the head grow towards the center of the face and join together to make a face. A cleft lip happens if the tissue that makes up the lip does not join completely before birth. This I think you have studied in your general surgery. Then a cleft palate happens if the tissue that makes up the roof of the mouth does not join together completely before birth. Epidemiology. Yeah, but one in every 1,600 babies is born with cleft lip with cleft palate in United States. About one in every 2,800 is born with a cleft lip without cleft palate in United States. 
about 1 in every 1,700 babies is born with cleft palate in the United States. Causes and risk factors. Causes of orofacial clefts among the most infants are unknown. May be caused by combination of genes and other factors like women who are smoking, diabetic and taking some medication during pregnancy. Management of treatment. Management and treatment. Services and treatment for children with orofacial clefts can vary depending on the severity of the cleft, the child's age and needs and the presence of associated syndromes or other birth defects or both. Surgery to repair a cleft lip usually occurs in the first few months of life and is recommended within the first 12 months of life. Surgery to repair cleft palate is recommended within the first 18 months of the life or earlier if possible. Surgical repair can improve the look and appearance of the child face and improve breathing, hearing and speech and language development. With treatment, most children with orofacial clefts do well and lead a healthy life. Summary Prevalence of dental trauma is still on a high level worldwide. A dental trauma affects quality of life. Dental traumas are costly and time consuming to treat. Dental trauma events often occur outside of his time, which may result in a worsened prognosis. The knowledge about how to act at the scene of dental accident is of major importance, especially concerning avulsive permanent teeth. And IADT guidelines and dental trauma first aid app are of great help to inform about how to professionally treat a dental trauma and what to do at the scene of accident and later at home. Thank you.